that uh, Danny and Judith Williams are with us tonight, our, our missionaries to Nepal. And Sister Katie will come in and introduce them a little later. But I want to share some um, specific requests that we've received over the last couple of days and let you help me pray. Uh, we want to pray for Heather Hancock. She will have her surgery tomorrow. Also, Mr. Les Goodwin and uh, Sister Cha Parker, Sister Fanny Beasley, uh, Sister Donna Pope, Brother Danny Willis, Sister uh, Carol Cooper, and Miss Henrietta Maynard. Let's lift those folks up to the Lord tonight. And, and maybe you have a special need. You sought to lift up your hand tonight and let the Lord know. God bless you all. And our online family, why don't you let us know in the chat as well what's going on with you so we can help you pray. If you're able and willing, would you stand with us for a moment? Let us pray together. And after this prayer, we're going to sing a song of worship and Sister Katie will be coming and uh, introducing our speaker. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we are honored and we are so thankful to be able to be in your house, to be able to be here with your people tonight, dear Lord. And we can celebrate your goodness. We can celebrate your mercy. We're so thankful that we can look to you. You even tell us we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Father, you know every need tonight of those who are in need of a, a touch from you. And we lift them up to you. The names that we've mentioned, hands that have gone up, online family who is connecting with us now, we pray for every need and we proclaim your healing touch in the mighty name of your son Jesus, whose stripes we're healed by. We pray pray for the physical, emotional, and even spiritual healing that's needed tonight here. And Lord, I pray now as we begin to sing songs of praise unto you, that you will be welcome in this place. Lord God, that you would let your presence be sensed here in a very real and a very personal way. I pray that Brother Danny and Sister Judith just feel you in a real way, that they feel your love, they feel your welcome through the people of this church, and they just feel a freedom to minister as you have called them to minister. And we'll all leave changed in your great name. For it's in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray and let the church say amen. Would you make someone welcome in the house of God?
know that his grace is enough for each one of us tonight. His mercies are new every day. Let me just thank you for that, Lord Jesus. to introduce Danny and Judith with, to you tonight. I've met them many years ago. I guess it's probably been, I don't know, 10 maybe? Um, they were working at OTT, Operation Teaching Tools, with um, Rose Boyd. My mom was the secretary there. David was volunteering there. Um, and I don't, I don't even know. I, I don't even think maybe we had just gotten married. Um, and um, they were just getting started in ministry together. Um, and so I got to see them very early in their togetherness. And they were so sweet. And I don't know, they loved the Lord so much. And they loved each other. But they had such a ministry, a prayer ministry. Anyone that was around them was affected. And I was blessed with that 10 years ago. And every time you're in a room with them, you're impacted. And I know this, this happens no matter where they're at. They came to our church a while ago when we were able to accept a new missionary to bless from our church monthly. And um, they were here itinerating, and they gave coins out. I don't know if you were here the last time they came. They gave coins out from Nepal, and the kids loved it. And Zoe especially, I'm sorry she's not here tonight. She is going to be very disappointed. <laughs> um, she loved it. And even in the Sunday school class, you know, I have her now in my Sunday school class, but she talks about it all the time. When we talked about, you know, we talk about missionaries a lot 
in my Sunday school class. We have the, the um, pictures, we go through the link, you know, we pray for the missionaries in my Sunday school class. So, um, you know, of course we talk about everybody, but every time we see you guys, she talks about that coin that you guys give her. And um, that really makes an impact. So, I mean, no matter whether you meet them in the sanctuary or you meet them in the foyer, you're impacted by their ministry. They have a huge prayer ministry. I follow them on Facebook a lot. Um, I see their pictures. I love the work they do in Nepal with missionaries and that are going out there, um, the leadership trainings that they do there. I just can't say enough about what they're doing for the kingdom. And I'm so, so thankful that they're here to talk to us tonight and can't wait to hear what they have to say. So please welcome them as they come to share. Well, thank you so much, Katie. Uh, how humbling and precious. You know, when um, I was a teenager, my Sunday school teacher was the mission director, and she impacted me for eternity with sharing the very things that you say you're doing with your young people. You never know in your class the next pastor, the next missionary, and God is going to call some of those young people. Thank you for your heart for missions. Well, we're so excited to be here, and we are Danny and Judith Williams. We, um, since we were here before, we have been back to Nepal for several, a couple of months, and a lot has taken place. We want to thank you tonight for your support. Uh, we can't do it without you guys. It takes the goers and it takes the senders and the prayer warriors. So we uh, value those prayers, keep them coming. They have kept us protected, safe, and out of harm's way many, many times. Only when we get to heaven will we really know the times that we have been protected by our Heavenly Father. But a lot has taken place. We held conferences, and Danny will share more about that. But we had a specific women's conference for women leadership, the first of its kind in IPHC, and we were just thrilled with the women that came forth. Remember, we're in a margin where women are very marginalized in this country that we live in. And um, to see the women come out to worship, to be valued, to be honored is just a beautiful thing. We currently have 60 female IPHC pastors. Is that to God be the glory? We're just, we're overjoyed and we want to pour in them and impart into them. We do not pay our pastors. We give them fellowship. We give them training. And it's really important that we pour into these women pastors, and that is one of my heart's desires. So we have a female pastor that has taken a leadership role, and her heart's desire is to travel throughout Nepal. Nepal is a hard country to get around in because of all the mountains, places that she could go that I probably will not be able to go, and the language barrier as well. So she's a real blessing. We've also added on 10 more people-to-people -people children, so we have 10 children that need to be sponsored, and that gives us a total of 35. I don't know if you remember, but we began that program in Nepal, and that was another heart desire of mine when I was a young girl, that one day I would go to the nations somewhere and start a child sponsorship program. So because of your giving and because of your love, things are being done and things are being accomplished in Asia, and we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you. Um, but uh, I, I just do some reference. You know, I, there are certain things when you get older that you, have <laughs> that you have to do to help your memory. I don't know if any of you have that problem, but uh, somewhat, sometimes I do. And um, it's amazing all this. Uh, but I, I read a good report for you, you guys that are a little older that it said that our brains have so many things in them from so many years on earth that it's getting hard to retain more and more. So I, I, took, I took comfort in that. I took comfort in that. Amen. Well, we, we were, uh, we, we had six pastor conferences in a 10-day in period of time across the nation. 
and uh, I came back sick. So I, you, can, you can imagine all the things that, that took place. The roads are rough. Uh, they've gotten rougher. I, I thought they was get, supposed to be getting better, but they always, they, they have a way in Nepal. I don't understand it, but they, they'll pave a road, make it look really good, and, and uh, a month later they'll come back and tear it up because they forgot something about the pipes, you know, or something. And then it'll stay that way for six months. Oh, it's just something. But, uh, and the travel over the mountains, that's, that's fun. Um, but God has, has really blessed us, and uh, we added another 100 churches uh, during that, those, those uh, uh, two weeks, and uh, we're at uh, 700, 708 churches now. Yeah, give God praise. And uh, it's hard to get all those people together, but we're going to attempt to get uh, several hundred together anyway uh, in Kathmandu itself uh, in, in October. Uh, for a, uh, two days, a great pastoral leadership meeting, and uh, Dr. Ryan Jackson from the Capitol Church is going to be helping us there, and so uh, we're really thrilled about that and uh, and his expertise and what he has to offer. Uh, we uh, we're a bit closer to buying our headquarter building, but we're having problem uh, with the finance ministry to get be able to get a letter that lets us to bring in all the money into the country. And uh, they like to delay churches, you know, even though we're legal. So anyway, uh, we we may be able to lease the building. We have a building I should put brought the, I brought the picture, but I should have put had it put up. But anyway, uh, for you to pray for that we need that we need that building. We need that building. We need it desperately, and in, in many many levels in many ways. And so um, uh, pray for us for that. Thank you for what you have already done. Thank you for opening your pulpit. We weren't here that, it wasn't that long that we were here because I'm used to waiting two and three years before I get back into a church. So we're privileged to be able to do that uh, with you. We do have uh, our cards if you want to sponsor us individually. I know the church is sponsor us. We thank but we need all the help we can get. You may, under, may not understand at this level, our expenses are constant. Uh, we're going to do a two-day conference, and it'll be about $5,000. And that's because we bring in, you know, all of our pastors are not uh, well off by any means, and uh, they, they exist on a very small amount of money per month. So we have to help them come in. We normally require them to pay half their way. And so sometimes, though, that is, uh, we slip that out of the way so because they need the help. But uh, so pray for us and pray for us about that, too, because uh, I haven't even haven't even started raising any of that funds. <laughs> so so God, God's good, and uh, he'll do it, you know. One individual wrote a check for that amount of money last February. Uh, it's just, you know, and, uh, and I didn't advertise it. God, you know, when, when you're in a faith walk, I, I mean, but when you're in a faith walk, now, a lot of times we think that because we have jobs, we have income, we have security, they're not, we're not having to walk by faith. But let me tell you, sometimes you've got to walk by faith even more these days. Your job may be there tomorrow, may, may not be there tomorrow. You've got to trust God in everything and every part of your life. This is not a one-time experience of getting saved, trust God, going to heaven when it's time. This is an everyday. Actually, salvation is an ongoing experience. It's not just a one-time experience. It's an ongoing, everyday fight for us to be in faith to believe God. To believe God said what he said and what he said is going to come to pass in our life. Amen. Amen. How many believes they're going to heaven when, at the end of your life? Well, that's beautiful. Look at that. Do that again. Pastor, look around. Just look around. Just think about that. Just think about that. God has impacted every one of your lives in his salvation power and changed your heart, changed your mind, changed your thinking, and continuing to do so. That's why salvation is ongoing because a lot of times we have to renew our thinking almost every day. And so, and so to get it back into God's thinking, we live... In the United States of America, we live in, a, in what has been a great country, and I'm praying it back into greatness. While we're, while we're in the States, we were operating an intercessory prayer group on a Monday night in our area to pray for America, to pray for our 
Supreme Court, to pray for our legislation, Congre Congress and, and all, the president. We even pray for the president. Didn't seem to be doing any, never mind. Um, um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to get political. Um, the, fact, the fact is that, that uh, we, you know, I believe America is going to be saved. The Bible promises and says at the end of time, there's going to be this great revival. And he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Not everybody's going to accept it. Not everybody's going to get into heaven because they, you know, they're stubborn. And you pray for them because we were the same way. We were the same way. And something happened miraculously to bring us to faith. And so that's what we need to pray for. You see, John 3, 17 says that Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world. I was raised Pentecostal. That, I, they just seemed to leave that one right out of the whole Bible because they were condemning the world all the time. Some, some of them act like they're ready for some people to go on to hell. But I'm not. I want to see people get into heaven. And so I didn't, I'm not condemning the world. I'm condemning the fact that I don't have enough faith sometimes. That's what I need to condemn. I need to understand that uh, I, I, I used to, the charismatics would say, if you don't get healed, you don't have enough faith. And I, I always thought, and I was, a, I was a charismatic preacher, you know, I, I preached in a lot of different venues, and I always thought, well, maybe you don't have the faith for them. So you got to be careful when you're pointing fingers, especially one finger, you got, you know. You got three back here coming back to at you. And that's true. That's why we got two ears, one mouth, you know. Listen twice as much as you talk. Some people don't, hadn't got that either. I if you will listen to people when you talk to them, especially about the things of God, and I mean really listen and allow them to talk about their troubles or their problems, the Holy Ghost, will get a hold of your hearing and you will hear something that did not come out of their mouth and you'll be able to help them. Not just cliche, not just, you know, the Roman road, that's, that's wonderful. But you'll hear something that'll help them make a step forward. Pastors know this all the time. Pastors' wives know this all People in ministry know this all the time. You better be hearing from the Holy Ghost. You better not be fully listening to what they're telling you because most of the time that's not even the problem. There's a deeper issue. Yes, sir. There's a deeper issue. I, I'm, I'm into inner healing. I don't I get to do a lot of it. That takes a lot of time and counseling and understanding. Uh, but I, I believe everybody ought to go through an inner healing course. We need to look at our past to make sure it is not affecting our present. Amen. And there are things that are affecting from our past, our present still, and we don't even understand it fully. We don't understand that that's what somebody said, what daddy might have said about God or what or mama might have said about God or, or Auntie Ann said about God, that, you know, that it is impacting our thinking in the back of our head. It's, you know... Uh, my my grandfather uh, my grandfather would say was so negative you know he would say things about uh, uh, I wouldn't go across the street to hear that preacher you know stuff like that and there was no real reason it's just he didn't want to go across the street but that impacted my dad and my dad was a very negative person even though we st he's in church all of his life he's a deacon in most churches but he always had a controversy because <laughs> the fact is he was negative. And so you can learn, well, I'm all over the place. You can learn when you listen to negative talk, you can hear the positive part, not positive thinking, the positive part of the word that connects, that overcomes the negative. And that's what we ought to all be doing in our own minds. Every time the negative comes that's trying to stop us, God's leading us to do something. Well, then all of a sudden you, you hear 100 things that says, no, you can't do that. But God, you know, you, you really felt the impression of the Lord. You really felt the Lord speak to you. 
you really, it really jumps out at you at the word that what God is saying to you to do this. And, you, and, and so you hear all these things. That's what we're learning, salvation. Salvation is learning to overcome every negative thing the enemy says to your life about who you are, what you are, and what you can accomplish. Because you in God is more than you'll ever, ever understand on this side still. But I want to try to understand more and more and more. I've come to understand who God is is who I'm supposed to be. And I'm going to fight for it. In fact, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 20. Verse 1 through verse uh, 3. I'd like to go in the whole chapter. Can't do that on Wednesday night. When you go out to battle against your enemies, does anybody have enemies? Hopefully you don't have peoples that are your enemies. Most of you, I mean you may have, but most of you, we're talking about who? The devil and his cohorts and what he's trying to stop you in your life from doing. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see uh, the horses and the chariots and the people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you who brought you up from the land of Egypt or out of bondage or into salvation. So it shall be when you are on the verge of battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people and he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you're on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. And do not tremble or be terrified because of them. Let's read verse 4. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Uh, I've been asked many times, uh, have you ever been threatened? We were asked even that tonight. Have you ever been threatened? And I've probably told you, but I've been threatened four different occasions to be killed. One was to be bombed, one was to be shot, one was to be cut up in little pieces, and one was to be burned alive. And there were real threats by real enemies with two legs. And some of them had quite a few more because there's, other, there's groups of them. But I want to tell you something. And, and one, time, one time we were in the jungles of Gujarat and we, had, we were threatened to be burned alive when we left. They were going to stop us on the road and burn our, our car. They instructed our driver, if anybody tries to stop us, just run over them. He said, okay. <laughs> that was so easy. <laughs> but uh, we didn't, thank God. The point was, everybody got scared. We had, we had some of the pastor's children with us. We had about 12 people packed into this car and, um, and driving eight hours. <laughs> and uh, so they were starting to get fear. And the Holy Spirit just calmed me. And what came out of my mouth says, gentlemen, don't be afraid. Nothing is going to happen to us this night. Peace just came into the car. And nothing even come close to that. And these were people that were heckling us during the service on the other side of the jungle pathway. God is good. I always say when I, when I do say I've been, I've been threatened four times just to preach in the gospel. How, how can you be threatened when you're preaching uh, somebody loves you? Somebody cared for you enough to die for you. How, why? Because it threatens their way of life. It threatens their money. It threatens their power over people. And so you're going to be threatened from time to time. But all I always say is I'm still here. I'm still here. Because God is good. And I may give my life for the cause of the gospel one day. But you know, I'm going to tell you something. I'm willing I found out for myself that I was, if, till I was willing to die for the cause of Christ, 
I wasn't living very much. When I became willing to die, I began to live. Except a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die. You got to die to yourself. You can't, be, you can't care what people think about you. I am getting more and more into a prophetic ministry. And if I cared what people thought when I said things that God said through me, I, w I would be a nervous bundle sitting in a corner, you know, all bundled in a, in, a, in a little ball or something. But I can't. I have to trust God. I have to believe God. And I'm going to tell you, by prophecy, America is going to be saved. America's not, I, I've studied a lot of end times. That's the way I started my whole ministry. My first message was when I was 16, 16 years old. I'm 70. My first message was, Jesus is coming soon. Well, he hadn't come yet, but I'm 70 years closer anyway, so thank God. But the fact is, we're supposed to be living like he's coming today. We could be raptured right here in this place right now. And I've studied the end times very deep. i studied all the great teachers, you know. I and uh, I've studied all those that were, that were uh, real deep into the, into the end times thing. And, and uh, I, I began to realize more and more, God has a real plan here. Not everybody really understands it because four different uh, end-time preachers may say it four different ways. And some may be pre-trib, post-trib, you know, past-trib. I mean, <laughs> that's not real. Uh, you know, it, it, it could be anything. And, and some don't even believe tribulation. And some, some kingdom people, which I'm a kingdom person, but I'm not in this class, believe that America is just going to get better and better and better and the kingdom is going to work in America. That's not the way it's going to work, people. Jesus is coming and going to change and going to burn up this whole place and give us a new heaven and new earth. Amen. The fact is, and that's Bible. There's, I mean, that's solid Bible. That, that's not a, a theory or a one-time place. That is Bible all the way through. The fact is, it's happening and going to happen in our life. And I believe it may happen in, in, in our lifetimes. And some of you as old as I am. But it still can happen in our lifetime. Amen. It's just getting close. But you have to understand God's calling you to be a warrior. He's calling you to be a watchman in prayer. A watchman is a person that protects, watches over, even hides things but make sure they can see the enemy coming and pray against it. You're, you're supposed to be a watchman for your family. And it's not just a wife or it's not just a husband. It's supposed to be both of you. You're watchmen. But you're warriors. God spoke to me, and I don't know if I said it last time. Sometimes I lose track of what I say in what churches, so you have to excuse me. And if you hear it twice, that's good for you. Uh, my, my mentor our mission has always said the, the price of knowledge is repetition. So, so if you hear it uh, another time, I guess that's okay. But God, God spoke to me on our prayer journey last year and said to me, I am renaming my people. I said, what? He says, they are now to be called warriors. And he says... And they are now among the warrior clan. And I said, you know, and I said, well, that, that's, that's amazing. And he led me to Deuteronomy 20, which is a warrior chapter. And how God told those that were not engaged in the war and were thinking about home, when they just planted a crop, he said, go back and tend to it. They just got married. He said, go back and tend to it. You know, uh, he was he's telling them, well, that's not the only place that happened. Gideon experienced that too, where his, his band went down to 300. And yet God took those that were serious and warriors 
and overcame a very large contingent of enemies. When you get serious, I'm not talking about just living your life normal. I'm not living my life normal. I mean, I, I may do things, you know. I, I may relax and, and watch a, a, a TV program. But I'm not living my life like that all the time. I've got to be engaged in my mind in warfare. I've got to be watching out for my family. And some things I have just refused. The devil's not going to do. Amen. That's it. I'm tired of it. Amen. I've taken that authority position. You have authority as a believer against the enemy. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. I don't care how weak you think you are. You still are more powerful than ever devil in hell. Amen. The, only way is it, the only way you're not is when you start believing his lies. If he's lying to you and say, oh, you can't do that, poor little thing. But I first went on live television five nights a week, two hours a night. And, I, and after I was there one month, they handed me the program when I walked in five minutes before. Live TV. And I looked in the mirror and I said, I can't do this. And God said, yes, you can. And I walked out there. And I did that many, many nights. Didn't know I was going to have it till I walked in. That's why I can do without notes. But the fact is, God's always preparing you for something more. You know, let me tell you, the negative things you've gone through in your life, God's preparing you for something more. The wars that you've gone through in your life, God's preparing you for something more. You're not only go going to get out of your bondage in your mind, in your heart, in your body, you're going to be able to help others get out of their bondage. Amen. And that's why God's training you. It's not just to get to heaven. That's what my, that's what my ancestors thought. You know, God saved me so I can get to heaven. And that was their whole focus. I'm... 95% of the songs we ever sang was about heaven, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Some of you not. Because they, they, didn't, they didn't like life. They wanted, they wanted heaven. But I tell you what, I've accepted life, and sometimes I don't like it, and some things are tough, but you can do it with God. Amen. You are more than you think you are when you have God in you. God in you. Boy, a lot of people have trouble with that. Even people that are saved, being sanctified, being baptized in the Holy Ghost, have the trouble with saying that God lives in you. But he does. With his spirit, he came in. Jesus says, I came to tabernacle with you, to dwell with you. To it's not dwell outside you, it's to dwell within you. So wherever you go, you've got him with you. You don't have to call on heaven to come down. Heaven already came, and it died on the cross, and now his spirit lives in you by his holy spirit spirit he's with you and he said I, I'm not only with you I'll never leave you God don't leave me alone if I stray do not leave me alone pull me back in and he has he has I've, no, I've not been perfect in my life I'm near perfect now <laughs> pray for me <laughs> I'm from Texas we think that anyway The fact is that to be a warrior, you've got to work toward perfection. You've got to work out of the negative thoughts in your mind and overcome it with the Word of God. The Word of God is very powerful. Sometimes we just don't realize how powerful it is. We, if we could see in the Spirit how our words reverberated in the spirit world when we spoke them, how the demons 
just would start shaking and start fleeing because the light is being exposed. The real truth is being exposed. That's why I believe in the prophetic. God exposes the darkness. I have to think I'm going to word this. I believe in exposing darkness too. Not only my own life. I have to, I have to over, always overcome darkness. I cannot let one time light uh, not be the dominant factor in my life. And light means revelation. It's revealing things to you. So when the word reveals something to you, that is your warrior voice. When the word reveals something to you, that's your warrior voice. That's why you need to read it, need to study it, need to meditate on it, need to, need to practice it. Somebody said, I just can't overcome the negative voices in my head. I said, yes, you can if you'll get louder. Just get louder and you'll overcome and that may sound simplistic, but that is absolutely the truth. Because if you can overcome the hearing, you know, I've done here, but I've, I've done, I do it many, I go in Pentecostal churches and I have deliverance services for people that, that their mind is constantly being overwhelmed by thoughts, negative thoughts. I went to a church in Virginia a doctor friend was with me and I preached that, that we're opening doors to the enemy with our thoughts and allowing them to stay there. A bad thought is not, uh, 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 even, is not even the temptation part. The temptation is when you go over and start doing that, that thing. The fact is you're being tempted to not believe also. And I was preaching that in this church and he was thinking, oh man, I don't think anybody's going to respond. And I made a simple altar call. I said, if, if you've opened doors to the enemy, come forward. And 95 people showed up at the altar to be prayed for, to help close doors. That's because we've all done it. We've all done it, but we, I, I mean, maybe out of ignorance, maybe out of not understanding, maybe not out of being preached to, maybe not out of, uh, you know, out of having any background in this or whatever. It, it, it may be an innocent doing, but I'm exposing to you every part of the enemy's strategy. He is here and he's planning to bring you down, but he can't, he just can't. That's his thought. That's what he wants. He hates you. He hates me. And thank God. I thank God the devil hates me. I had a, I had a, a major prophet prophesy to me one time and said the demons will flee at your very walking into the presence. And I said, hallelujah. I want them to be scared of me. I want them to be scared of me. They've tried to stop us. I had a major heart attack when we started this journey on going into IPHC missions. I've been in missions for many years before that time. I never had one problem. But I want to tell you something. You're going to face challenges. And, and people would say, oh, we're so sorry. You're not going to be able to go. I said, what? I said, give me a few weeks. And in a few weeks, we were gone. <laughs> That's the fact. Nothing's going to stop you when you know your course. Amen. Everybody has a course and a path. It's called salvation. That is your pathway. That's what you're, you're going toward. Not everybody's called into major ministries or not everybody's called into overseas ministries. Not everybody's called going out of state, doing this and doing that. Not everybody's called to be a teacher, pastor, evangelist, you know. But some of you have that spirit in you. I don't know if I've ever said this to you, Pastor Mark, but there's some of these people have a pastoral heart. Let them help you. 
Some have an apostolic heart. They want to go out and start some ministry here, do this ministry there, and they're going out on the street and doing their own thing sometimes. Let them do it. Encourage it. Some people have a prophetic edge. They want to prophesy. Now, that can get out of hand. And if you have a warning, go to your pastor and talk to him. Don't ever stand up in church and give a warning without the pastor's permission. I'm going to just say it like that. Is that okay, sir? Just don't do it. Just don't do it because I wouldn't allow warnings. Because I had a woman. I won't go into that. I had to shut her down. But the fact is, you're going to have to be strong enough to do that. If you're going to allow Holy Spirit anointing, Holy Spirit power, Holy Spirit prophecy, Holy Spirit words of knowledge, you got to work the things that are going to be problematic out. That Paul did. What's the difference in us? But there's nothing wrong with that. You say, well, this person prophesied and that never came to pass. Well, maybe they prophesied out of their heart. Maybe they just thought they heard something. Give them a chance to grow. What if they're false? Well, you'll, if, you're, if you're true, you'll know it not too long because you'll know a tree by its fruit. What fruit? Is he trying to instill fear in you all the time? Oh, that's not good fruit. If he's trying to, you know, get you saved, like because they used to get us saved by trying to scare us to death, we're going to hell tomorrow, you know. I, I don't think that's good fruit. Though there are a lot of people got saved. We got no the fact is that God is saying to us, you're a warrior. Say it with me. I am a warrior. Now say it like you mean it. I am a warrior. Now, you see the difference in that? Now that's a simple, simple thing. But the difference is you said it with authority. Compared to timid, you know, being timid. And we cannot, a warrior cannot be timid. Amen. He'll get killed. And we've been killed enough. Amen. You've been killed in your, in, in, you know, in your love for people. Because you've allowed things to. It's destroyed relationships because we've allowed th things to smash it. It's all the devil and what he's trying to do in your life. The good thing is God's got more for you. He's got more for you than you can ever, ever think. He is more interested in helping you grow and become a real warrior than you getting to heaven. Because if you're saved, in my mind, that's fairly automatic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, some people can stop that from happening. Yeah, yeah they, can, they can make some bad, bad choices. So I won't get into that theologically. But the fact is, God wants you to know who you are. Amen. Not what your mama said you were, unless it was talking about, you're this word right here. That's you right here. Jesus is love. You know, God is love. That's you right there. That, that's you. Pastor Mark, that's you. God is love. Mark, Mark, Mark is love. That's who we are. Power. Sound minds. I had to remind a lot of times the devil I had a sound mind. Because I was being overwhelmed as a pastor when I was younger. And boy, I was being overwhelmed. In every way. I didn't realize it's just simple preparation for what I do now. Just simple preparation. It didn't seem so simple to me. And it seemed very hard. And I had to pray and fast. And I know it doesn't look like I do that much. But I <laughs> prayed and, and fast and, and seek God and, and try to see what's wrong in my life. You know, what, where I wasn't overcoming in this thing. I had to know. How to overcome. Amen. You've got to know how to overcome. Yeah. In fact, Revelations tells us 
to them that overcome, they shall receive the crown of life. Woo! What does that mean if we're always being defeated in our mind, in our hearts, in our relationship? What does that mean? I don't know the full implication of that. I hope it don't mean what I think it means. But I'd want to see every one of you when we all get to heaven wearing our crowns and then we'll take them off and throw them at Jesus' feet. Because it was worth it all. Amen. It was worth it all. It is worth it all. It is worth it all. Everything you go through, everything that you don't understand, you will understand it's worth it all. Amen. And it may take a long time for you to understand certain things, and it's taken, and I've taken me a lifetime, and I still don't understand a few things that I, that I wrestle with in my life. But I finally came down to the, uh, the decision, oh, God, you know a little bit more than I do, so I'm going to give this to you, and when it's my time to understand it, then I will understand it. If that's heaven, then that's heaven. Wow, this is so different than what I planned on tonight. But I tell you what, God is saying, warrior clan, I want you to stand up. I'm going to anoint you as the warrior clan. Yes. Now, you can take it or you don't have to take it. That's not up to me. I'm not trying, I, don't, I can't, you know, I can't save anybody. I finally figured that out as a pastor. I can't save anybody. I tried. I tried to straighten out a lot of people so they would be made sure to make it to heaven. I figured out that wasn't the way, the way to go either. I, you're supposed to love people and help them every way you can. If you can help them in that, that's fine. If they won't receive the help, then you can't help them. The fact is, just love. Just love. But warriors are not only, they're lovers. I mean, you know, when a warrior finishes a battle and he goes home or she goes home, it's a nice homecoming, you know? Because they're now out of the fray of that war. But it's going to be a homecoming. Because you you as the bride of Christ are go, is going to be worth it all. And so, and so take this understanding as I pray for you. And say, I am going to be this warrior and nothing, nothing, nothing is going to stop me. Let me warn you. Here's my disclaimer. When you say this, you better watch out. Because it will be here for quick. And it may be the biggest test of your life. But you'll get through it. You'll get through it. And you'll remember what this preacher said, as maybe as inadequate as I have but saying it to you, you are a warrior. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over everyone that will receive the warrior uh, speech from the Father, because that's who spoke to me, and said, I'm making my children warriors. I'm calling them by war as the name of warriors, and I'm making them a clan of warriors where they war together. They're not warring alone. They war together. And so in the name of Jesus, I anoint each one that says, I am a warrior tonight. I anoint them by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the anointing of the word of God that says we will follow the Lord. We will work with him. We will overcome everything the enemy has to, it's coming against us. In Jesus' name, we win every time, every time. No matter what we see, no matter what we feel, no matter what we hear. We believe God more and greater than anything. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated for just a moment. If you're here and you have been having those overwhelming thoughts, this is the kind of thoughts that won't seem to leave you alone. It's a day and night thing. It's not just a simple thing. It's not just a, you know, I'm worried about my child because of, they need to get a job. You know, I, I'm not talking about a simple thing. I'm talking about something, uh, you know, I mean, if they're on drugs or something, and that's, that, that can be also be a part of it. You're just constantly worrying about them. Well, I want to tell you something. You've got to give that to God. You have to give it to God. I've been through it. 
I understand it. You've got to give it to God because you can't handle it. I always said every old donkey can just hold so much load until they need help. Another donkey needs to come by and help them with the load. Think about that. But if you're having those thoughts, if you're having that in your mind that's constant, I can give you a starting point of prayer that'll help you overcome that. Will you come to, give us a little music. If that's you, let's, let's give everybody a, a, a moment of uh, solitude. Close your eyes in prayer if you would. Appreciate that very, very much. Don't be looking around. Some people are comfortable, some people are not with this. So if that's you and I'm talking to you about overwhelming thoughts, tormenting thoughts, really, raise your hand. Let me know that's you. Thank you. Put it right down. Put it right down. Put, okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, thank you. Anyone else? I know of two other people myself by the Spirit. We can give you a starting point of help. But you have to acknowledge you need the help. Now let's all stand again. And if those that will come forward and make a stand of courage that says, I want to be prayed for to begin to break this cycle of worry and torment over my mind. Come on. on the back of those ladies that come forward. Pastor Mark, who's your most trusted uh, prayer warrior deacon in the church or whatever? I'm going to ask them to come. Chris, come. Put your hands on your pastor. I shouldn't say anything, but I want you to mark it that your pastor walked up here. That's humbling themselves, him, himself before God. Most pastors are tempted to act like that they overcome everything easily. But there is no one that overcomes everything easily. Now, those of now having the torment, that's a great thing. Thank God that right now you're not working in that, that vein. That's not overwhelming you. So if you're saved really saved I, I don't mean fake saved if you're really saved put your hand out toward these and start praying the prayer of deliverance that the enemy will be shut down right now torment will stop right now come on some of you are already prayer warriors I need you right now I need you right now some of you are really prayer warriors. I need you right now. I want just give it a moment. I want everybody up here to also be praying. I want everybody up here to be praying that. a little bit, not, not for anybody necessarily, but just the fact that we're, we're just getting a hold of the Lord right now. All of us are getting a hold of the Lord right now. Now we're all in this together. 
I'm going to ask a couple, a few of the ladies that really feel led right now by the Spirit to come and help pray. Come pick somebody out and put your hand on them. I'm about to let it, I'm about to let this prayer of faith go. It's powerful. It is powerful. I know it is. Powerful prayer of deliverance. You see, I'm not saying that these people are possessed. I am saying that they're being oppressed by the enemy, but it's happening in their minds. So we're going to get rid of that. This is the beginning. Then I have a little bit of instruction afterwards. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay, okay, li listen at me just a, just a moment. Listen, at me. I've just heard. The Lord said there's some, there's some that have opened the doors to this happening because of their anger. Maybe it's past situation. You've got to ask God to forgive you and let that go. That's closing the door. So you do that. I'm not going to point out anybody or anything. But that's an open door. One of the other open doors have been one, uh, somebody was abused. Sexually. Somebody's been abused mentally. You were oppressed by some... even. There's somebody that's been oppressed by a religious, spiritual person they thought, or you thought, but they oppressed you religiously. Close the door. Say, this is not a religion, this is Jesus' relationship. Close the door right now. Close the door right now. That sexual abuse, that mental abuse, close the door. Forgive the person Forgive the person, that's for your sake, and they'll be put in God's hands. You just let, the, you let that go. They'll be put in God's hands. They will answer for what they've done. But for yourself, forgive. Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I speak the healing prayer of deliverance. Every demon, every demon that has spoken the new, into the minds that have convinced us of different things that have caused us, Lord, to have this torment. I stop it now in the name of Jesus. And I close it by, a, by the power of God's authority. I close it right now. Shut up, devil. Just shut up. That's the end. This is the demarcation mark. We've just crossed over the line. We're not going back. We're not going back. We're not going to allow it anymore. We're not going to allow it anymore. And that's what every one of you now, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what you ought to be saying. We're not going to allow it anymore. Most of the things you worry about, you can never even change. Most of the things that are tormenting your mind, you can't do anything with it anyway. God's got to do something with it. And you keep praying for Him to do it, but you just let Him have it. Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, I anoint. I anoint each one now. And I speak, Lord, that, oh God, let the peace of God now replace, let the peace of God now replace those thoughts and those situations, God. Let the peace of God, let the peace of God, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Now, now. Holy Spirit, drop in peace. Drop in peace. In Jesus' name. It's yours, Lord. It's not ours. It's yours. It's yours, Lord, not ours. It's yours now, not ours. 
in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Your self-image is going to change. Your understanding about yourself is beginning to change. God says, I see my daughter. God says, I see the one I love. God says, you haven't done enough or things have not come against you enough that I wouldn't love you. I love you unconditionally. I have forgiven you totally and completely. And you are my daughter. I will never, never forsake you. I will always be with you. And I'm changing the way you think because I've called you to do my work. name. Who else that, Who else was up here? You were just praying with him. Okay. All right. Have I anointed everyone that was up here? Did you need to be anointed? Okay. Thank you. Very, thank you, Lord. All right. Woo. Hallelujah. Now, the little bit of instruction I can give you to begin the process is take the Word of God and all the promises that you've been standing on. You've used them. I'm, I'm not negating that. You've used them. You've tried to stand. But you didn't understand the power of your Word by the Word. And somehow, I want you to see the promise that you stand on tomorrow or tonight before you go to bed that that promise is linked up with heaven and there's nothing that can break it or nothing can stop it so if God has promised you your household if you don't understand that take it but if God has promised you your household then nothing can break that and it will happen you say but but one of my members they died and we don't know if they went to heaven or hell don't you even think about that God can take one second and make it seem like 10 minutes things can take God can take it and change it all your prayers can culminate in that one second don't think anything different don't allow anything different. But they were this. No, I, no, 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 no. You don't think anything different. The thief on the cross got to paradise because he believed that last moment. That last moment. That's your first instruction. The rest of the instructions, do it every day. <laughs> Do it all the time, as much as you need to. Speak it out loud. And if you feel timid with it, slap yourself and say, no way. And get it out. Get it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. Not, you don't have to literally slap yourself, but you understand what I'm saying. I have had to a couple times, but you don't have to. I mean, the fact is that God loves you and he cares for you and you're his child. If you've been truly born again, I'm not talking about some small profession of faith that nothing ever changed. If nothing ever changed in your heart, nothing ever changed in your mind, nothing ever changed in your life, something's wrong with your salvation. Please go back to your knees and humble yourself before God and get stay there until he changes you. But other than that, if you're really saved, have promises that God will always keep. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen.